Allah Azza wa Jal says, if we had opened up the doors of our rizq, if we had given our sustenance to our servants, لَبَغَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ They would have gone beyond the measure. They would have gone to a level of haram. They would have done something that they should not do. وَلَكِنْ يُنَزِّلُ بِقَدَرٍ مَا يَشَاءُ Instead, Allah reveals with His qadr as much as He wants to whomever He pleases. Now this verse tells us a very interesting reality. Allah gives those whom He loves just enough for them to not go beyond the bounds. Allah is saying, I know how much you're capable of. And if I were to give you everything, then you would go beyond what is halal, what is permissible for you. And this same sentiment is demonstrated in the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. In a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, it is narrated that the Prophet was giving someone uh, money, or he was giving a group of people money. One of the Sahaba said, O Messenger of Allah, why don't you give so and so? For wallahi, I think he's a mu'min, he's a good guy, give it to him. And the Prophet ﷺ ignored him. And he kept on giving to other people. Second time the Sahabi said, Ya Rasulullah, give to him, for wallahi, I think he's a mu'min. And he ignored him for a second time. A third time he ignored him. And then our Prophet ﷺ turned and said to him, Oh so and so, sometimes I give money to people and I don't give to those whom I love more. I.e. the beloved I don't give to. Out of a fear that that money will be a temptation that will drag them into Jahannam. In other words, our Prophet ﷺ knows the people. And he is saying, what you're saying about this man might be right. He's a mu'min, he's a good guy. But he doesn't have that type of, if you like, patience with money. That he might do something that is not appropriate with that money. And therefore, dear brothers and sisters, what we learn from this ayah and from this hadith is very simple. And that is, what we do not have, and we tried to get it, we didn't get it, we should be content that Allah has a plan, that Allah knows how much He's giving. وَلَكِنْ يُنَزِّلُ بِقَدَرٍ مَا يَشَاءُ Allah reveals with His qadr as much as He pleases that person. In the end of the same surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the same fact, but this time about children. Allah says in the Quran, He is the one who blesses with children. يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثِ to some he gives all daughters. وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذكور. To some he gives all men, all boys. أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمْ ذُكْرَانًا وَإِنَاثًا And some families they have boys and girls. وَيَجْعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا And some people have no children. إِنَّهُ عَلِيٌّ قَدِيرٌ This is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows who to give what to. And Allah knows how much to give. And Allah knows who to test people with. And therefore the believer who believes in Qadr, one of the main benefits of believing in Qadr is that you feel a contentment of the heart. Whatever has happened, has happened because of Qadr. As I said many times, Qadr is used to calm down and to find release from a calamity. And Qadr is not used to justify a sin. Qadr is used to find peace in whatever Allah has decreed. You didn't get the job, Qadr Allah. You didn't make the million that you were looking to get from the business, Qaddar Allah. You didn't have this, you didn't get that. You tried, you made dua to Allah, you didn't get it. Now the point is you have to try. If you didn't try, then that's your problem. But you have to try, you want the job, you want the business, you want to get married, you try. If it doesn't happen, that's when we say, Qaddar Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter tested him such that from a very early age, yes, he had a good reputation. He was known as as sadiq Al-Amin. He was known as one who was truthful, one who was trustworthy. But later on, when he was given revelation, they said he is a liar. They said he is a cheat. They started accusing him. They started harming him. They started saying so much against him. All that is a sign of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If no one speaks bad about you, it means you don't have anything that they envy you about. If no one backbites about you, it means there is nothing about you to talk about. There is nothing that you have, but the more they speak behind your back, 
the bigger the gift that Allah has bestowed upon you is. So you've just got to smile and carry on. You've just got to thank Allah and continue. It must humble you and bring you down to the ground. It must make you get closer to Allah. When you cannot see, for example, the hadith says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whomsoever I have taken away their two eyes in this world, if they have borne the patience required for that, I will give them paradise in return. This is a great gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He means if you bear patience upon the test that Allah has placed in your life, then Allah will give you paradise as a result or in return for that particular sabr and, and patience that you endured. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all Jannatul Firdaus. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, at a certain stage when revelation did not come, he was concerned. Many of us in our lives, when things happen that are difficult, we ask ourselves, is Allah upset with me? Maybe Allah has abandoned me. Maybe Allah has forgotten about me. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. These are bad thoughts, but they cross the mind sometimes of the people whose level of belief or iman is weak. So they start thinking to themselves, is Allah upset with me? Why am I sick? Why am I ill? Why do I have this constant sickness? Or why did I lose a loved one? Why did this happen to me? And why did that happen to me? How come I suffered a loss? Why is it I'm looking for a job and I cannot find the job? Why is it that I've got a job but there is no barakah or blessing in my money? I'm not able to save any money. Why and why and why? And why those questions happen to pop into our heads so often without us realizing that the types of challenges that those whom Allah declared his love for went through were far more than the type of challenges were far more severe than the type of challenges that we are going through so don't let yourself into the questions why did Allah do this to me rather go into the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and whatever difficulty you have while reading through his biography you will be able to achieve and derive a lot of comfort and a lot of solace you will be able to feel so good because you will realize what I am going through is nothing if anyone has lost a loved one, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam lost all his children during his lifetime. Besides one and her name was Fatima. Fatima binti Muhammadin radiyallahu anha. She lived a little bit longer, a few months longer than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So if you take a look at his children, the boys, all of them passed away either in infancy or in childhood. None of them became adults. And the girls, all of them passed away as adults during the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam besides one of them. And that was Fatima radiallahu anha. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has also lost loved ones. The Prophet ﷺ also had people who tried to fight him, people who tried to attack him, people who prepared armies to actually harm not only him but the Muslims to usurp their wealth, etc. He has been through so many challenges, but he did not lose hope in the mercy of Allah.